In this episode of the weekly roundup of Shadowlands, we start with an extremely important announcement. With the new week and your renown being able to go all the way up to 18, from 15 to 18, the Kyrian campaign has unlocked a cutscene, a very special cutscene. Here it is in all its splendor. Robbie. I'm so glad I got to see you. What is this? A Nobel video? You think I would have shown you some RP cutscenes? Come on, nobody gives a shit about this. I don't even know who was on the screen. I just saw the Winter Queen. That's it. Anyways, you get some more story if you enjoy that sort of stuff. But staying for a little bit about the renown you're gonna get. As you know by now, I think, I hope, you're getting three renown per week. So you stopped this week at 15. If you have re-rolled or if you want to change covenants or whatever, you can still get to 15 from 1 just by doing activities in, in the world and they will award you renown up to 15 and then you have to get it normally like everyone else with your double weekly quests as well as your covenant chapter quest. So your renown this week, the, the main thing that you're gonna get is number one, you're getting an endurance conduit. At least one of your soul bind per covenant, Cleia, Emeni, Nia and Theotar are going to unlock an endurance conduit. This is going to be the third available conduit for you and this is the power level part the power for your character then we have some extra covenant hall help which is going to be getting an extra adventurer for your covenant missions you have clora for kyrian rencissa for the necrolords shalor for nightfay and simon for ventir the real thing though that is going to ruin people as usual talking about uh, people spending too much anima and not having enough for buildings is going to be that at renown 17 Kyrians can unlock the Selfless Wings of the Ascended transmog, and Ventir can unlock the Kel's Dark Sinstone Chain. I'm sure many of you will say, fuck the buildings, I want to look cool, and they will just go and buy these transmog pieces. Nightfay and Necrolord are gonna get fuck all. Necrolord will get an extra piece of their transmog set, the shoulders, and the Nightfay are going to get their, their legs. The only special thing happening is that Kyrians now also get their mount, their eternal phalanx of courage. So this is what you get this week with your renown. In classic Blizzard style, this is the first week of the expansion where time walking is a thing. So time walking, of course, you can use to gear up your characters. The item level of the time walk to loot is 158. And of course, in classic Blizzard fashion, they fucked up the release and gear wasn't scaling. People were just, people at max level were clearing it and getting item level 76 from the vendor or even just 36 item level from the bosses. It's been not fixed. It's been not fixed back to what it was intended. Then again, 158 is, um, you know, it's pretty low, but that's, I guess, you know, what time walking gear is supposed to do to get you closer to the actual current part of the content. So in this case, it would be doing time walking so you can start doing heroic dungeons. For the slow pokes, for everyone who has taken its time to play or for people who have rerolled or who are already leveling their alts, this week, soul forges and upper reaches are going to be available. So several legendaries available for each of these two wings, particularly all of the flavor of the month rerollers going restoration shamans the memory of the primal tide core is available this week this is a very strong the main restoration shaman legendary uh, for niche hipsters the memory of the apex predator is available for feral druid this is the main legendary for feral as well as the memory of a temporal warp for arcane mages and the memory of the unblinking vigil for aoe or maxmanship hunters are going to be both available in the upper reaches so keep this in mind this is also the week where finally you get to scale higher when it comes to your redeemed souls every week your weekly quest that used to give you five redeemed souls now is giving you ten now i'm going to voice the sentiment of many people here oh great now i am getting more redeemed souls which means i can unlock all of my buildings in my covenant hall faster there is a problem though, all of these buildings cost anima and I haven't got any fucking anima because anima requires me to farm world quests and thankfully, thankfully, Blizzard made world quest and AP farming a non-issue this expansion which means there isn't really a need for you to do this because it doesn't give you power, it doesn't give you player power so what this means now is that I'm gonna get my buildings all stuck at level 1, maybe one of them at level 2 but then Everything after this is going to start costing 5,000 anima and I haven't got it. This is pretty much the main sentiment of people I have seen about this. Um, I, don't, I don't exclude Blizzard is going to nerf the amount of anima required from the current numbers that we see. We see 5, 7, 8,000 anima 
required for buildings, particularly when later in the expansion, as we have gone from day one to now, it's not that you are gaining more anima throughout the week. It's not like the old AP. It's not that the, the quests used to give you 70 anima on day one and now they give you 250. No, they are still giving you 70. Maybe 100, a few of them 140. It's been the same for a month, but the cost of the building keeps going up. So as for me, I have no intention of grinding for something that isn't player power related. So um, sorry to my Covenant Hall. Sorry for the Necrolords who thought I was going to be their champion. I am ditching them big time when it comes to building stuff in their little house. And now talking about some cool stuff. Actually, this was all some irrelevant stuff that everybody should have known already. Now let's talk about some cool things. The weekly affixes of this week. Tyrannical, inspiring, necrotic and prideful. So, okay, prideful is already a, a thing. People have gotten used to it by now. In most cases, prideful is basically a help for your entire dungeon. I've, I don't remember any other seasonal affixes that gave you as much of a help as prideful has. Some debate might be had with Nyalota and the last season where you could use the seasonal affix for skipping without using Shroud, for example, but this prideful seems extremely powerful, for example, in Tyrannical Week. Now, we see finally for the first time, unfortunately rather, not finally, Necrotic coming in Shadowlands. The addition of the last of the new affixes. We have gone through Storming, we have gone through Spiteful, now we have to go through Inspiring. So, Inspiring, luckily, of course, because we already have Necrotic, is not something that is going to affect bosses. Necrotic will, but Inspiring won't. So, in a week where we don't have Fortified, Inspiring will likely seem or likely feel less bad than it is. Remember that Inspiring can still happen in Fortified weeks, so that's going to be much worse. If you have already started doing some dungeons and you think Inspiring is annoying, well, you have been doing it without the, the Fortified Affix. So, at the very least, at the very least, this week of Affixes doesn't have two Affixes that can affect both of the main weekly Affix. For example, Bursting and Volcanic can both affect trash packs together with fortified. For example, spiteful and grievous can both affect trash packs throughout a fortified week. But as for tyrannical, it tends to stay, it tends to be one and one. If you have necrotic, which affects bosses, you're going to have inspiring, which doesn't. If you have necrotic, you're going to have bolstering. If you have, if you get explosive, you're going to get bursting. If you get quaking, which affects bosses, you're going to get raging, which doesn't. So this week, with Inspiring and Necrotic, it's going to be pretty tough, because even though it isn't Fortified Week, Necrotic does also put some pretty heavy load on the tank when it comes to Trash Packs, even without Fortified. Especially comboed with Inspiring, because Inspiring is going to land on a mob, you have to burst that mob down, and the possibility of kiting is severely hindered, because you basically can't CC the pack. You can't see, see the, all of the other mobs, so only a select number of tanks can get, you know, even just a small breathing room throughout packs. Something like a demon hunter that can immediately leap away, or something like a monk that can teleport away, or even roll, or cheat torpedo. Other tanks like DKs, tanks like guardian druids, tanks like, yeah, even prot paladins as well, are gonna have a little bit more of a harder time when it comes to kiting. Paladins, of course, get the help of Blessing of Protection, even their own bubble, which can get rid of Necrotic. So I wanted your input on this week of Mythic Plus. You know, sometimes people refer at weeks of Mythic Plus affixes as push weeks or skip weeks, depending on how likely is it going to be that pushing high keys is going to be available. Even just in your own small world, you don't have to be thinking about pushing plus 20 keys. You can even just be a plus 10 player thinking about pushing plus 13s or a plus 13 player thinking about pushing plus 15s and get your achievement and your mount. This is going to work on all levels, on all difficulties. This level of thinking is going to work on, on all difficulties, on all levels. I think it's going to be lower. I think this week is going to be harder. I think it's going to be less easy to push. Not completely sure about the highest of keys, but when it comes to the middle of the pack, when it comes to the biggest chunk of player base, so even the biggest chunk of my viewer base, I do think it's going to be harder. Particularly, of course, in Pugs. In Pugs, Tyrannical is always going to be harder than Fortified. You don't get the get out of jail free card of wiping on Fortified, where you can simply rest and start the pack again. Yes, you lose time because you die, but it's not as much time lost as if you were dying on a boss. Not only that, but bosses sometimes simply cannot be killed. 
Sometimes you even struggle killing a boss with Prideful or even with Bloodlust and then you wipe and you don't have either and good luck. Unfortunately, for these affixes and for the popularity of tanks, Vengeance Demon Hunter is still going to be pretty good because, as I mentioned, its ability to run away and to kite instantly, which is very good during Necrotic Weeks, of course, Protection Paladin, whenever you have a Necrotic Key, is going to gain way more value because it can be self-sufficient in removing it by himself. And then other tanks, slower tanks, like a Guardian Druid, like a Blood DK, are going to have way more trouble. So tell me, what's your take right now on this week of affixes? And then we will see throughout the week. We'll probably go, as usual, somewhere around Sunday, maybe Monday, and see how keys and how progression has kept going in Mythic Plus in this new week. No, 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 no. Just because the torment has ended and I have my legendary, it doesn't mean Blizzard is getting away with this, okay? Since this is the last time it, this will be relevant, it's worth mentioning again for the last time that this was an absolute abomination. Whoever let this happen should have been jailed for crimes against humanity. Almost 40 days to wait for a legendary when other specs could have gotten theirs on day one of Shadowlands is embarrassing. Whoever created this system has made me his nemesis. I will hunt him for the rest of his days and he will not know peace. Now closing, closing the video, yesterday I gave you the Mythic Plus damage calculator. So today I thought I was also going to give you another extra bit of help when it comes to knowledge about your class, knowledge about your spec. You know, sometimes you go on your class discord, sometimes you ask maybe in chat to some of your friends, you try to look maybe on Reddit.io, maybe you try to look at a stream. So I'm giving you something that can give you these answers extremely quickly and it's going to be Mythic Plus subcreation. So what mythic plus sub creation does no please please don't immediately start looking at tears in here okay that doesn't but don't look okay don't don't look close your eyes what this does is you can look at whatever spec you want even in every specific affix in case for example there are different talents or different legendaries even depending on the affix like tyrannical or fortified like you know single target or aoe and whatnot maybe some some interesting answers to other affixes like necrotic or spiteful some talents are going to change like for example taking mass entanglement during spiteful and similar things you are for example let's say a melee dps let's say you are a havoc demon hunter you can go and look what's going on with havoc how many talents are being taken depending on the keys depending on the key level and which types of legendaries you can see that even if for example chaos theory is a very popular legendary for raids when it comes to mythic plus the collective anguish which is going to be the more aoe focused legendary is way more popular same for all the different types of talents people are going for and then you can go down and even look at the soul binds the different types of soul binds and the percentage of players that took those soul binds as well as then you can go down and see things like conduits as well as all the items enchants down to the trinkets and all the enchants for the rings, the enchants for your weapons, and even the types of gems. You can do this for Mythic Plus, and you can do this just the same for raids. Maybe you are a healer, you are a flavor of the month re-roller, you want to know stuff about Resto Shaman, cool. It's going to tell you your talents, it's going to tell you the legendaries, and all the various setups very, very quickly. This is the best way for you to get essentially the quickest and fastest roundup information about your spec given the current for example boss affix key and whatnot you can of course always still go more in depth do more research ask you know more knowledgeable people but this is going to give you essentially the community's answer because this is going to be essentially information taken from all the players who run these keys and most of the keys most of the level of mythic plus for example that is going to be highlighted are very high keys so presumably pretty good and competent players and with this, with this roundup of the day, for the start of the, what's this, sixth week of Shadowlands, and what, fourth week of Mythic Plus, we are done. There's not much else to talk about for today, so I'm gonna have to leave you, I'm gonna have to start playing with my new, shiny, legendary, and feel useful again. See you guys soon, have a good day. In the meantime, I'm gonna hunt the fucker that cock-blocked me from my legendary for a month.